Just imagine you had a blind robot working in your home. While it was cleaning, lots of things would disappear which you might have preferred to keep. Or one day in the future, a driverless car fails to recognize obstacles in its path. If we were to trust blind systems, the consequences would be fatal. So computers have to learn to see like a human. The watchword is computer vision. Michael Black and his team at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems in Tübingen want to teach computers to recognize objects or pictures from every angle and when they're moving. For humans, it's easy. But for computers, it often poses an insoluble problem. Computers already do see, at least to some extent. Their perception just isn't as good or as general or as flexible as human vision. The basic scientific question is how does perception work, in animals or in computers or in robots? If we can understand that and replicate that at some computational level, then I argue that we've understood it at a profound level, and it will help us understand human perception as well. With the help of a 360-degree body scanner, the computer aims to imitate human perception. The system analyzes surfaces, movements, and the deformation of objects. The object being examined here is the human body. The 4D body scanner records various body shapes. 4D because it adds the fourth dimension of time to the three dimensions of space. The computer joins the various camera pictures together and thus records the movements of the person in space. 66 cameras observe the person simultaneously from 22 angles, precise to a millimeter. They take time-lapse pictures with 60 photos per second. Uh, so 4D allows us to look at how objects deform over time. A football hitting somebody in the head, both the head and the ball deform. Uh, in this high-speed 4D scanner, we can watch the interaction of objects and the deformation of objects, and we can then begin to model their properties. But how does the computer know whether it's scanning a knee or a shoulder at this point? After all, the system must not only recognize forms, it must also allocate them correctly. How does the computer identify a shape? And which characteristics does it ascribe to this shape? This is easy for humans. How do you teach a computer what a ball is? A child plays with them and figures it out, but a computer doesn't play with balls. So we use our 3D scanning technology to teach them about the shape, and we use our color cameras to teach computers about the appearance and illumination reflectance. And then we have to track them in, mo in motion and see how they deform and teach computers about how objects move. So the computer is a bit like a small child. Both have to learn to compare what they've seen with their own experience. The camera corresponds to the child's eye. And the computer program is the brain. The small child sees something round and learns by experience that the ball will bounce if it's thrown. The brain and the program both need a reference so that the shapes that have been seen can be attributed to a particular object. Black's system gains its experience of what people look like through Caesar. In this international research project, several thousand inhabitants of the USA, Italy and the Netherlands were measured and scanned. Most of them standing, sitting and bent over. From these data, the scientists developed a variable model that contains all the important information about the wide variety of shapes of human bodies. This body model, and hence the knowledge of body forms, is incorporated into the research of the scientists in Tübingen. Now, however, they have to teach the computer how bodies change as they move in different ways. And they do that with the help of the body scanner. The first step is that the model is adapted to each new body after measuring, until the body's shape and posture match. 
The computer is trained with a large number of poses and movements, and thereby learns the ways in which people can move and what they look like as they do so. The soft tissue requires special attention because fat, connective tissue and muscles are distributed individually and can change shape. That was great. In order to find out how the soft tissue behaves during movement, the scientists asked the test person to carry out some free dance movements. But here there's another problem. In parts of the body that hide each other, the scans have gaps in the data. So it is particularly difficult to model hair and hands. The system has to learn to supply things itself which it cannot really see at all. For the human brain, that's easy. For example, someone is standing behind a blind. From experience, we know that the different parts belong to one body. Our brain simply supplies the missing information. But for a computer, that is anything but obvious. However, with the assembled knowledge of body shapes, the computer can even manage this. With the help of the adjusted body model, it can fill in the gaps in the pictures. On the basis of a single shot, we can now generate various realistic movement sequences for any specific body, regardless of the pose in which the scan was carried out. At the click of a mouse, you can also see how a person changes if they gain weight or get thinner, for example. So, the software can also recognize a person even after a long time and will not make the mistake of confusing him or her with someone else. The software has now learned all aspects of what people look like when they're moving, a major step in the direction of intelligent seeing systems. And there are also some very practical applications. We're excited about the accuracy of our 3D body model because we think it can be used in a variety of applications, helping people with anorexia nervosa understand body shape. And even there are applications in the fashion industry. A clothing program, for example, in which avatars of specific people can be dressed, using fabrics which also behave realistically during movement. That's not only interesting for internet shops, but also, for example, for the film industry. Very soon we'll be able to create precise digital 3D avatars of people that can be inserted into movies and can move exactly like the human being with all of the subtle nuance of the human body. But that is only the start. The better developed the seeing systems become, the better computers will be able to recognize objects or people. But technology is still a long way away from being able to replace humans and human perception.